This video is all about the five needs of animal welfare. If you think of animal welfare as a big heart split into five parts, then an animal only has good welfare if all of those parts are taken care of. So what are the five parts? The first part is the need for a suitable environment. This just means that animals need a home that is right for them. So let's call that the need for a good home. The second need of animal welfare is the need for a suitable diet. This just means that animals need food that is good for them and that differs depending on the species. So let's call that one the need for good food. The third need of animal welfare is the need to exhibit normal behaviour. This basically means that for good welfare, animals have to be able to do normal things that are typical of that species. Let's call that the need for fun. The fourth need of animal welfare is the need to be housed with or apart from other animals. This just means that some animals like to be alone and others like to live in groups and they should be kept in the right group size for that species. Let's call this the need for the right number of friends. The fifth and last need is the need to be protected from pain, suffering, injury and disease. I think we all know it's not very nice when you get sick or injured and good health is important to other animals too. So to keep things simple, let's call that the need for good health. Different types of animals have different expressions of those needs. For example, a lion would need different food to a rabbit and a tiger will want to be alone, whereas elephants want lots of friends. But ultimately, they all need good fun, friends or not, food, homes and health. What makes a good home differs depending on the species. For example, a tiger needs a big territory, around 100 square miles, but a herd of elephants is forever on the move between feeding grounds with no fixed abode. Sometimes an animal has needs that we simply cannot provide in our farms, zoos or homes and they don't have good animal welfare if we keep them captive. The dolphin, for example, lives in the ocean and swims thousands of miles across the waves with no fixed home base. The dolphin is born to roam and explore and we simply can't provide a home that is big enough for them in the zoo. Zoos are also very boring for dolphins. We can't recreate the exciting and ever-changing ocean floor. This is a dolphin in a zoo. See how he isn't moving much? That is a sign of poor welfare. The home is not right for him and the dolphin is sad and bored. Dolphins in the wild never stop swimming, even when they're asleep, because they only rest one half of their brain at a time. When they become listless like this, it is a sign of depression. Wild rabbits can roam as many as 30 football pitches every day, but they also like somewhere safe to go back to and hide. It is important for good welfare that we provide pet rabbits with a good home that allows them both room to explore and exercise and somewhere to hide. Some people think rabbits live in hutches and they're just meant to sit there and look out on the world. This is completely untrue. Rabbits are born to explore and interact with the world. The rabbit is the UK's most neglected pet because people don't understand their needs. If you want to address a rabbit's needs for a suitable environment or good home, then remember a hutch is not enough. You also need to play with your rabbit, provide space for them to explore, and give them interesting things to do. They also have other needs for good welfare, which we will talk about in a bit. Now it's time to talk about the need for a suitable diet, or put another way, the need for the right type of food. When it comes to food, there are three types of animals. Carnivores, herbivores and omnivores. What does that mean? Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores. For example, this lion eating a gazelle is a carnivore. And so are those vultures waiting to eat the leftovers. Animals that eat plants are called herbivores. This giraffe is a herbivore, and so is this monkey. Animals that eat plants and animals are called omnivores. Bears are a great example of omnivores. They are known as ferocious hunters, but they also like to chow down on some fruit and veg when they get the chance. This moon bear is enjoying his apple immensely. 
Now let's move on to the need to exhibit normal behaviour. Or put another way, the need for the right type of fun. There are lots of different animals and they all behave in different ways. Every species has behaviours that are important to them. For example, dolphins use something called echolocation to find their prey. This means they send pulses of sound into the water to see what they bounce off. In the zoo they can't use this because it hits the walls of their tank. This is another reason why we can't provide good welfare for dolphins. Chickens love to dust bathe every day. These battery hens can't dust bathe because they don't have the right environment, so they have very poor welfare. These are hens that have been rescued from a battery farm. They are enjoying their dust bathing so much. Ducks are very motivated to find water. They actually become very stressed if they can't swim. Moving on, the need to be housed with or apart from other animals, or put another way, the need for the right number of friends is very important to animals. Animals that like hanging out with other animals are called social animals, and animals that like to live alone are called solitary animals. Social animals, like elephants and rabbits, have very poor animal welfare if they live alone. It is important for their welfare that we keep them with other animals of their own kind. This is a male elephant that lives alone in a zoo. He has very poor welfare. We know that he is stressed because he is rocking. Animals that become stressed in captivity sometimes behave strangely. We call these strange behaviours stereotypies. Animals perform stereotypies to help them cope with the stress of their poor welfare. Some animals like the company of just one special friend. Penguins form close pair bonds and live together for life. They would also have poor welfare if they were kept alone in a zoo. The last of the five needs of animal welfare is the need to be protected from pain, suffering, injury and disease. Or to put another way, the need for good health. We should always think about how our behaviour will affect the health of the animals in our care. For example, if you leave a dog chained up in the rain or locked in a hot car, it will cause that dog to suffer and he would have poor welfare. If you have a pet, it is your responsibility to ensure it is kept in good health and take it to a vet if it becomes sick or injured. Captive animals such as pets, farm animals or zoo animals don't have control over their homes, friends, food, health or access to fun. So it is our job to make sure we satisfy all five of their welfare needs. Animals need all five of their needs to be taken care of in order to have good welfare. If any piece of the puzzle is missing, they will have poor welfare. Remember the pieces of the puzzle? Good fun, friends, food, homes and health. Animals need all five pieces of the heart to be happy and healthy.